What's going on, everybody? We are live here on the UFC Las Vegas post fight show. We're trying to throw in some bells and whistles. I know a lot of you were were sad, a little hurt, a little upset. That you didn't get Casey's mixed martial arts chant for the preview. Oh, I could have done it. But I mean, look, we made it happen. And now UFC Las Vegas is in the books. Massive win for Marab Dewellish Willie. He was a pretty sizable betting underdog heading into this fight. And he just, Peter, Peter Jan just had nothing for this man. His pace is unbelievable. I think he attempted like 50 takedowns in the fight. Oh, there we go. Oh, I love it. Just keep that looping. Yeah. There's be the background for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're off to a tremendous start. I forgot to uncheck the loop thing, but thank you for joining us. I am Mike Heck. That is Jed Mishu. Jed, I thought AK was going to be on. I was not going to bury the lead. I was going to lead off with the pleasure man. Um, mm. I don't know what number was higher, Marab's takedown attempts or the pleasure man's fence grabs, but that's neither here nor there. But <laughs> dead heat. <laughs> dead heat. But Marab Welsh, really, man, he just goes in there. And just melts Piotr Jan all over him from the jump. He was, uh, the first round was, he did more in that first round to Piotr Jan than any second against Jose Aldo. That was like what I tweeted out. It was very impressive. He was striking. He was hitting Piotr Jan. The leg kicks were nasty. He was getting the takedowns. And that pace just continued on and on throughout the fight. Obviously, the striking slowed down a little bit. Picked back up in the fifth round, but this was a Marab times two kind of performance, and he just blew the doors off of Piotr Jan, swept the scorecards. This fight was not even all that competitive. How surprised were you to see it play out the way that it did? I was very surprised. I mean, we talked about it in the uh, pre-fight Q&A. I I didn't think he'd be able to get Jan down all that successfully and was correct in that. He, He didn't, but I just sort of didn't think that he'd be able to do this uh, to put his cardio wrestling game, you know, to bear on a guy who has proven to be extremely well-versed in 25 minute fights. Like Piotr Jan gets stronger as fights go on. Like that is the hallmark of his game. And it wasn't there. Right. And I I don't know. It looked like he caught, uh, got hurt in that second round from a leg kick. The commentary team was saying it. Uh, Marab had been throwing a ton of those. I don't know if he just blew a tire and could never get back on or if Marab is simply you can't stop the cardio monster. But, I mean, he he whitewashed him. It's 50-45 officially. Probably should have gotten like a 10-8 for that second round too. Like, it's that was just pillar to post, man. Marab doesn't seem like your your favorite fighter. Oh no, watch. I I hate him. No interest in watching this <laughs> man fight. Him. Why? Yeah, no, because th- that fight was awful to watch. And like people are going to reflect and be like, "You're a big Piotr Jan guy." I'm not actually. I'm not super into. I respect Piotr Jan's game in the same way I respect Marab, what Marab Valashvili did as an achievement and is very difficult. Not here to say that he didn't win that fight and that wasn't hard. And that there were stretches of it where he was compelling. The first seven minutes the first two rounds marab was very compelling and then in that fifth round he he dialed it back up he got a little more excited at actually causing damage i he he was that is almost the textbook definition of fighting to win a contest which is what they are doing and i understand that that is the job and that's how you do it but i don't that's the least compelling way of fighting for me uh i'm not saying it's the easiest by no means there are not like three people on earth who could do what marab did tonight but it's making it a cardio competition i don't i'm not here to watch crossfit like that's not what i'm here to do and that's in large part what that fight was and it's a very effective way to go about it but i would like all of your offense to be leading to something in a substantive fight ending manner or damaging way and i mean during the middle of it it wasn't we weren't even pretending that these takedowns were were trying to get to a position to hold they were strictly to make Piotr Jan work and tire him out and like you i'll give you some leeway you know if if you're doing that round one to get a guy tired in round two but then 
you know, round two, round three, you are scoring those takedowns, you are advancing to position, you are threatening with stuff. Okay, but when you're in round four of a fight, you're clearly up. Again, I'm not saying it's not smart. It's obviously very smart. It was very effective and worked. I just, it, it is the least compelling way of fighting for me to watch. Did you think the the takedown attempt record, that being made such a big deal out of, I thought that was just kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, it's, like it's the hilarious. takedown record would be great, but oh, he, he attempted the most takedowns ever, but landed, what was he, six of 37, which again, he made Piotr Jan so work, that- but... I just thought them six, six of 37 is what UFC stats has right now, but they don't have that fifth round up. He did score several in the fifth round. So I, I believe he will have gotten up to double digits, but it will be on like almost 50 attempts. Yeah. Which that's, is, that's nuts. Yeah. That's nuts. And again, I'm not here to, I'm sure people are mad. I'm not here to say that's not hard as shit. It's impossibly hard. I couldn't shoot 50 takedowns on my punching bag right now. Like it is hard to do that much less to do it against a caliber of fighter like Piotr Jan but we're we cannot pretend that any of the takedowns in round three or four were meant to do anything other than make Piotr Jan work and to kill time because that's all they were and again it's an effective strategy but like it is not a thing I I am not when they said uh contender is made tonight or what what was their phrasing they said a star making star making performance maybe i can't i mean all the other composite parts of it were there he had a very good post fight speech clearly has galvanized the georgian fans that they showed out that's awesome so maybe it is in totality but I, i'll ask you mike are you stoked to watch the next uh rob dollar's really fight are you like waiting like can't wait to see this one I'm I'm intrigued because it's not going to be a title fight. Like it's just I, unfortunately because it might be. Of, of, you think so? I don't know, man. If, if Sterling Lee, if Sterling wins and leaves, it might be. Maybe, but if Sterling wins and leaves, it's going to be O'Malley and Cheeto beats Corey Sanhagen. There's no way Marab's getting that title shot. There's no way they're going to no, do. But a star Cheeto versus made O'Malley tonight, Mike. A star making performance, Mike. <laughs> what about star making? It's not, it's not landing. I've been saying the same thing about Marab for like three years now. There's not a Bantamweight on planet Earth who is going to be excited to see that man's name on the other side of a contract. No. It's The risk reward is just not there. Now he can't be denied. He's won, what, nine in a row now? He's a win away at war- maybe two. At worst, he's two wins away with this division being what it is. But he's in a great spot because no one does to Piotr Jan, what he did to Piotr Jan tonight. Not even Aljamain yeah. Sterling could do that. And that was friggin' impressive. So may not be the most compelling thing. May not be if I were going to go back and watch again and again and again, but the that, dude just went in there and got it done. And, and God that's the damn, thing. that was impressive. It, it is undeniably impressive. I don't want anyone to misconstrue what I'm saying here. Yeah. But in the exact same way that George St. Pierre just positionally controlling the hell out of Dan Hardy is not compelling fighting large stretches of that fight were not. Now, there were parts of it that were. As I said, the first two rounds were were pretty good. There was back and forth. He was actively trying to damage him. In the fifth round, he picked it back up again. But he he marobbed real hard during the middle sections of that fight, and it was just like, okay, oh, spam. I was doing live blogging, and at some one point there, I'm just like, yep, shot a takedown, stuffed, punched on the break, shot again, stuffed, rinse and repeat. It's just like that's not it, it's not my favorite thing to watch mike if you like it then buddy marab is the fighter for you and uh even better there aren't i'm trying to think of people that i think in this division that could stop him from doing that at this juncture maybe two people in this division that i can see an argument for being like they can have success in, in stopping this from happening so you you're going to be in store for some good fights if that's if that's your particular brand of vodka. Yeah, he's 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 a tough matchup for everybody. So we'll see where he goes from here. I saw some people in here saying, "Oh, he should just fight Sean O'Malley in Newark." There is no chance Sean O'Malley takes that fight. Zero. He's ne- yeah. he's next in line. Why would he take that fight unless it's for the belt? And even then, I don't think I he would take. He would lobby for somebody for else. Belt. 
Yeah. I wouldn't take that fight for the belt. I'd just wait until Cheeto fought Sandhagen. And then I'd fight the winner of that for the belt because I don't have to fight Marab. Yeah. I can fight the winner of that for the belt. I would rather fight that. I would I would never sign to fight Marab Devilashvili. Just straight up. Like if I was a, a bantam weight of quality, I would never sign to fight him. Not not in the same way that like I would never sign to fight Francis Ngannou because I would like to keep my head on my shoulders. But like there is nothing to be gained here. Just nothing to be gained. At best, you're not going to look good in a win. And at worst, you're going to get cardio wrestled to infinity and beyond. So I would just, I would never fight him. He would be, he should be the most avoided fighter in the entire sport. Like I would, I would rather fight Shavkat Rachmanov as a welterweight than fight that dude. It's tough. It's a tough, tough damn matchup. So we'll see where he goes from here. Again, he's probably going to need another win unless the dominoes fall exactly where they need to. But what about Piotr Jan, man? Tough spot Dude. to be in. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. I I love <laughs> the career arc of Piotr Jan is one of the funniest things that's happened in the last like five years, man. <laughs> Why it's is it so funny? Because it's incredible. This dude was the second coming. He was it. The Henry Cejudo thought he was doing something by being like, I'm going to retire. The UFC needs me. And at the, the day he retired, after that fight, 20 minutes later, Dana White's just like, yeah, well, Henry's out the door. We got a new guy. Piotr Jan is going to be fighting somebody for the vacant belt in a couple of months. He wins the belt over Aldo. Great performance. And it's he, this is supposed to be the Piotr Jan era, era. It's like, who? a lot of great fights. Who's going to beat him? He's tuning up Aljamain Sterling. Throws the stupidest knee in the history of combat sports. The dumbest one. I was on the record then that it was dumb and he should have been DQ'd. I haven't changed my mind in the two years since then. He... He is punching this man standing over top of him and just whacking him. Says, eh, I'll throw a knee now. Throws it, gets DQ'd, loses his belt. Instead of losing his belt that night, if he had just been a normal person and followed the rules, he goes on to win that fight. Then he fights Corey Sandhagen, gets a title defense under his belt. And then who knows what's happening? He's fighting somebody else in his next title defense. Instead, Sandhagen, great performance, great win, loses the rematch, loses a Garbo splitty to Sean O'Malley, and now loses to Marab. He was supposed to be the next big thing, and now he's lost four of five. And it's all half of it. Half of it is due to his own his own stupid decision making. If he just hadn't done the most hilarious illegal thing in in this sports history. His whole career, his whole legacy would be vastly different than it is now. And instead, this is the room he's in. This is the room he's in. It's hilarious. Who is he going to fight now? I don't know if I know, man. Uh, loser of Sandhagen Vera. Um, uh, Umar. I don't know that he would have much Umar's appetite. Umar's a good one. I don't know that he'd have much appetite for that after the Marab unpleasantness. Um, is Adrian Yanez fighting anybody? Rob Font, April 8th. Oh yeah. Winner of that. He fights the winner of that. That's it. Book that. Okay. Cause that's, yeah. so no, nobody will be taking him down in that one. So he can get past the PTSD of 50 friggin' takedown attempts <laughs> and just chuck the mitts baby or score his own takedown. So, uh, and that fights a banger. So sure. Do that. Yes, that is that. That's probably that's probably the way to go. That's probably the way it's, to go. That's, the that's on to the next way. one kind of stuff right there. So yeah, great night for Marab Dualish. Really, not a great night for Alexander Romanov, who looked like <laughs> Jose hilarious. described him. <laughs> Alexander Volkov just just killed him. Two minutes and sixteen seconds. This fight was competitive for the introductions and that was about it and then Volkov just took his back and punched him in the face over and over and over again and the fight was over so what do we what, what can we say about this Jed the the battle of the Alexanders there was no battle there was Volkov's night and Romanov was just there to kind of take a beating one of two things happened and I'm, I'm leaning towards one way 
the way I'm leaning, the thing I think makes the, is the simplest and makes the most sense is Alexander Roma, uh, Romanov had an injury coming into this fight and he needed the money and so he took it. That is the one that makes the most sense to me. It would explain why he went from being fairly slim, uh, certainly much slimmer than the big bag of soup he was in this one, uh, but still rolls out here and doesn't even put up much of a resistance or fight there. Uh, based on no knowledge, t- entirely speculative, that would make a lot of sense if it came out that he was injured and just needed the money, so he took the fight, didn't want to pull out, whatever whatever, whatever you may have. The other uh, is that losing to Marcin Tiburo just broke him, and now he will never recover. And we've seen fighters have that happen before. You know, they're hot shit when they're undefeated and the world's their oyster and nobody can touch them. And then they have to deal with losses, even though that loss probably should have been a draw or whatever. They still just have to grapple with the reality of, of not being the baddest man in the world or whatever. And it could be that one, which would also explain the bad change in physique coming into this and the relatively inert fight that he put forth. So, uh, Credit to Volkov. He sh- he's a professional, showed up, did his job, got a very big win for his career, continues to just g- – he's going to continue to be the gatekeeper to the stars at heavyweight, it seems like. If you beat him, you're a top five dude, and he he will hold – he will be the great filter for anything beyond that. Uh, but good good win for him. He it has the rights to the name Alexander, if he would like, or – as Jose Young said, he can adopt ampersand now if, if, he, if he would so choose. <laughs> Nikita Krylov submission went over Ryan Spann in round fight, one. That was awesome. That was a fun one. They were fight all over the place. Fun. Jonathan Martinez upsets Saeed Nurmagomedov, which means the Nurmi parlay uh, kind of fell apart for you, Jed. Uh, good it win did. for Jonathan I kinda, Martinez. I, I, we talked about it in the, pre, in the pre-fight Q&A. It was like, I think that this is a bad bet. <laughs> I think Jonathan Martinez is a very live dog, but it's a gimmick and I got to stick to my gimmick, but I don't feel comfortable about it. And as the fight unfolded, even though I think there was an argument that Nurmagomedov won, I don't feel strongly either way, frankly. I was was just like, yeah, this is exactly what I thought. This is why I didn't feel massively confident that Saeed would win this fight. Yeah, I I thought thought it was close. I thought two and three were... I scored both two and three for Martinez, but look, if you scored yeah, two close. for Saeed, I, I ain't mad at you. Mario Batista lived up to that massive betting line, submits Guido Canetti in just over three minutes. Vitor Petrino. Dunked all the over pleasure the man. pleasure man. <laughs> the pleasure, pleasure man, man cheated his Our ass sl- off and couldn't win. <laughs> Our Slack channel was hilarious for that fight. It was absolutely hilarious for that fight. Uh, Carl Williams, good win. Josh Frem's submission fight. win. Yeah, that was, it was a win. And he got, uh, Josh Frem submits uh, SD Dumas. Not a lot of people saw that coming. G- great win for Josh Frem. Victor Henry, Tony Gravely was a great fight. Uh, Victor Henry gets the win. Ariane Lipsky beating JJ Aldrich. Not a lot of people Looked saw that coming. Too. Yeah. Looked real good. It's one of the best performances of her career. Carlson Harris beats Jared Gooden to start today. Bruno freaking Silva, Jed Mishu. What a finish that was. Kick Tyson Nam in the face with a front kick. One of those gnarly images. And then puts him to sleep with the rear naked choke. Flyweight under hits once again. Dude, it wasn't even the best finish on the undercard. I know. We're going to get to that. Other Look, I was going to get say, to that. I, other I, I believe you're intentionally skipping it, but that finish was sick. And it wasn't even the best technical submission on the undercard. I know. Well, there's a lot that went into the best technical submission, but this finish was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Flyweight unders continue to rule. Bruno Silva, what a freaking finish that was. The front kick into a put you to sleep rear naked. That was friggin' insane. It it was super, super good. Um, that fight was very fun. And it was exactly what we all expected. It was off for two years, too, coming back. So hell of a performance. We have bonuses. You're not going to believe this. I hope you're not looking at it. I hope you're not I'm looking not, at this. Okay, I'm don't not. look at it. Don't look at I it. I won't. Okay, so we know what the performance award winners are. We already know it. Bruno well, Silva, there, we're going to talk about the other one. Is there going to be a fight of the night? Oh, there's a fight of the night, Jed. There's a fight of the night. There's no way they did it. 
I don't, what, I don't what, believe they they did not fight? give the main event fight of the night. No, they refused, did not. Okay, I was just saying, I refuse to believe it. Which fight do you uh, think it was? Uh, okay, so it should be. I don't think they did it. It should be Krilov Span because that fight was just lovely. It was it's done. not going to be that. It's not going to be that. Um, did they do that? Oh, they gave it to Petrino to college, didn't they? They gave they it to, gave the, pleasure it to the pleasure man. man. <laughs> they gave it to the pleasure man. Unbelievable. Look, that fight was fun. <laughs> was... That fight shouldn't exist on a UFC <laughs> card in the modern era, but it was undeniably fun because uh... neither man had any concept for <laughs> holding position. Which makes it fun. It's like they basically flow grappled, but for real. So it was like, <laughs> it's like, all right, well now I now it's my turn to take dominant position, but I can't hold it. So now I give it back to you, and around and around we go. Poor Victor Henry, Tony Gravely. That fight was really really fun. Yeah, oh come on, Krylov. Everything's Stan coming. Was, was the fight that was of the fun night. too? That was fun that too. Was the but, fight of the night. But everything's coming up, Pleasure Man. Even when he loses, he wins. So 50K for the Pleasure Man, 50K for Vitor Petrino. There you go. There's your bonuses. The other performance award obviously goes to Davy Grant, who, I That's mean, sick. that was just unbelievable. With That's 17 sick. seconds left of the fight, a reverse inverted triangle out of nowhere against Rafael Asunso, who ended up retiring after the fight. But the whole sequence leading into that was very strange because Davy Grant is about to be taken down. He grabs the fence. Keith Peterson lived up to his moniker of no nonsense. Takes Good a point. For Keith Peterson stops you know the action. Stops the action. T- picks takes Davy Grant. Tells Davy demands Davy Grant get to his feet. Walks Davy Grant to the center of the cage. Takes a point, and then. They just let him fight. We don't go back to position. We don't do anything. We just start fighting. And Davy Grant lands a spinning back fist, hurts Rafael Asunso. Then he gets on. T- the Asunso looks like he's trying to dump him, but Davy Grant slaps the inverted triangle choke on, and Rafael Asunso falls asleep and retires. That was insane. That was a crazy like forty-five seconds to to a minute. But what do you have to say about that? Because that was nuts. That was insane. It was super wild. Uh, I don't know if you've ever um, grappled to this extent. It's impossible to finish inverted triangles anyway. Like they're not easy to finish, particularly not against a BJJ black belt. And so the fact that he like slept him with it was just unbelievable. That whole sequence was very weird. I was like, oh, a Sun Tzu is going to pull out in a Sun Tzu fight. Like, I thought he probably had won the first two rounds. They were a Sun Tzu like rounds, but I thought he probably squeaked them. Davy Grant came out, you know, th- throwing caution to the wind in the third, but he gets the point taken away. And I was like, okay, well, this should seal in a Sun Tzu win. He just got to, you know, keep scrapping or whatever for a little bit. And then back fist ending. We're, we're done here. It was out of nowhere, probably necessary. I'm not sure Davy Grant's winning that fight without the finish. So incredible comeback. And honestly, I mean this very seriously. Shouts to Keith Peterson. I think you are mostly a terrible ref. Um, I would, I, I just really feel that he's not a very good ref. But that is the correct uh, thing to do is to take a point there. I would like them to restart the position, but that's not really how it works. Um, but take the point because Mark Smith, how how ballpark it? How many times tonight did Mark Smith say, "Don't grab the fence"? 13 a dozen like he, easy. yeah he if keith peterson is no nonsense mark smith is all the nonsense full nonsense mark smith just gonna allow you to do whatever you would like look volkov was winning that fight he was gonna win that fight based on what romanov looked volkov very clearly held the shit out of the fence to keep from getting taken down and won the fight shortly thereafter like if if the pleasure man had any ability to maintain a grappling position at all when he repeatedly aggressively cheated with fence grabs <laughs> and moved into dominant position, he also would have won the fight. Like it is he, Mark Smith was terrible tonight. And so if I'm going to point out when somebody's terrible, 
I'm going to give credit to Keith Peterson. That was a good point take. I wish we saw more of that. I wish, I mean, this is pretty simple how we, how we do this. We've already talked about this a million times. I'm not saying you have to take a point every time, but it should be a completed takedown. You would continue on. If it happens a second time, it goes to the center of the cage. Third time, you take a point and you get the position, all that stuff. I wish that take a point every time, take a point yeah. every time for every foul. That's my stance. I I've been radicalized previously. I was like, well, we could do stuff like that. Take a point every time for every foul. Be an adult. Don't cheat at your job. Man, ain't cheating if they don't call it. But uh, yeah, I wish I wish uh, Keith took the point while the action was continuing on, a la the Joe Selecki fight, yeah. where like it was clear that there were glove grabs and Who'd fence grabs and all that. Take the point while the action's happening, and then maybe the ending sequence doesn't happen, and Rafael Sunsa's final fight ends in triumph but that's but not how it works this was much cooler though so. it was much cooler that was freaking rule insane. of cool yeah rule of cool it stands play stands that there's a very good chance that's submission of the year that'll be in the top five when it's all said and done it i will, would guess it will definitely be in the top five uh i am not confident that that's submission of the year because it is going to take an astronomical effort to knock off Grasso tapping Shevchenko. Yeah, it's like true. that. That's gonna take and and frankly, I don't know if I'm even putting that above Rachmanov bulldog choking the just throat out of Jeff Neal. Two eighty five gave us two bangers for some <laughs> of the year, so it's gonna be in the five. If it's not, that means we have had a hell of a year of submissions, but. It is going to require something really both both technically special and from a mean something like you know being a, a momentous occasion special to knock off Grasso coming out of nowhere and the image that came from that. Yep. Always cheat. We've been telling you Always coaches should have cheat, cheating man. practice for 15 minutes after every after every practice because they particularly if you know the refs who are like. You can now definitively say Mark Smith is never going to take a point from you for grabbing the fence. If I'm fighting and I know Mark Smith's the referee, I'm a thousand percent going to grab the fence. I will act like that will actively be something I will be trying to do if it is in a if I'm in a situation where I'm against the fence. Because why wouldn't I? There's no downside. There is no downside. All right. Uh well, if you guys have questions, let's get to them. That I mean, this was a fine card. It was nice to. It was pretty fun. I liked. I liked the setting. Hearing Joe Martinez said, "If you're excited, make some noise," and hearing people and actually do. make noise, that was uh, that was good. That was good. I liked the setting. I liked the walkouts. I liked seeing the you know they walk out. The doors were kind of weird because it was basically like it was just didn't seem like they were in the arena, and then you realize the they were in a the arena. Odd. Yeah, the venue's a little odd in that way, but yeah, you know. But I liked it. I, liked I was it. like people it like that was it was obviously much cooler to see the Georgian pride there for the main event. That um, was cool. So, yeah. And the the fights were fun. Like what what is the what was the worst fight on this card? I'm just looking over it very quickly. Like Carlton Harris, Jared Gooden or oh no, I mean it's yeah, Carl Williams Bresky. It's Carl oh, Carl Williams sure. Bresky was very obviously the worst fight. I had a particular reason to enjoy that fight, so it's fine. But that fight was terrible. <laughs> Um, but the rest of it was mostly good or at least interesting to some extent or another. So good card, good fight night card. And we're done at nine, you know? That's oh yeah. Sick. Love that. Love that. All right. Let's take some questions. If you got questions, let's get to them. Um, right, I'll start here. Marab won't fight Aljo, but if he did, who would win? I it's actually a really good question. Is I, I would defer to Aljo in this one, but I can't feel wildly confident in it. Um, I, I'm i going to forever underestimate Marab's chances against anyone because I don't like the way he fights. That's, that's a prejudice that will exist. And so I also, I have him ranked number three at Bantamweight before this fight. So like 
I clearly respect that what he is able to accomplish, but I don't, if he's getting into grappling exchanges with Aljo, Aljo's going to take his back and then he's going to be stuck there for the next four minutes until the round ends. So I don't think cardio wrestling is a particularly good path forward against Aljo. Yeah, I would lean Aljo myself for that reason. And plus Aljo is probably by the time they would actually get in there and fight. Oh, 20 pounds bigger. Yeah. Yeah. At least he'd be at least 20 pounds bigger. He's so he's just, he's a gigantic bantamweight. Marab has won nine in a row. Should he be ready for UFC 288? It's at some point teammate versus teammate may happen. It's never going to happen. No, it won't ever, never ever going to happen. Those two are never fighting. Uh, what else does Marab have to do at Bantamweight to get a title shot? Nothing. He's got to beat somebody else. He's probably going to win one more. We'll just, we'll just sit. If he just sits, he'll get a title shot. He can sit out. He and will never. he, He's though? not going to. Yeah, he will eventually. I don't know. I think he would get know. one eventually just because he's there's who else is going to do it in the next like either way if sterling wins i think he is at, it it appears that he's leaving if sterling wins um it appears that he won't even do the o'malley fight he'll just bounce um that's sort of how i'm reading the tea leaves if he loses we all know what's happening henry's fighting o'malley and then he's never fighting again so not at 35 yeah so we're just it, it's going to be sean o'malley Marlon Vera are in there, and then Marab's also. So if Sean's getting a title fight in one of these instances, then the next guy up pretty much falls to him. So he can just wait. I don't think he's going to do that. Seems like he'll fight anybody. He seems happy to be the the Shogun Hua to Aljo's Vanderlei Silva, if you will. So, yeah, you know. I see some people but, saying that they should do Marab versus Umar. They sh- that, that was the fight I wanted to see before they booked Jan. I was like, just yeah. give him, just keep, after Umar's last win, just give him to Marab. And we'll that actually probably is the most likely fight to happen next for him, frankly. You think because, so? Because uh, Umar will take it and nobody else is trying to fight Umar. So, oh, Umar would take it, but why would Marab take that fight? Because Marab doesn't give a shit. He'll fight anybody. Oh, interesting. I don't think he would. I, I think he would actually take a, a line in the sand for that one. I don't think he, I think he just doesn't care and will fight anybody because he thinks he's the best fighter in the world, which he might not be wrong. Um, and so he, he, like, nobody else is fighting Umar. I think he's the only one who might <laughs> at this weight class. That's ranked. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. It, unless the UFC makes them do it, ain't nobody else fighting Umar except for maybe Marab. Because they love, I mean, they friggin' love Corey Sandhagen. and they're gonna keep giving him chances. Uh, Cheeto obviously is is over like Rover right now. If Cheeto beats Corey Sandhagen, he's he's in front of Marab. Just yeah, I'm thinking for sure. this from a from a UFC sure. perspective, from a business one thousand percent, thousand percent, yeah, not even definitely close. in front. So if Cheeto wins, Marab could fight Sandhagen. That'd be enough to get it. And Marab would probably win that fight. Most people would probably pick him in that matchup. It'd be a good one. Be an interesting one, but. You got Adrian Yanis fighting Rob Font. That boosts him up in a big way if he beats Rob. If he finishes Rob Font, I mean, he's they're strapping the rockets to Adrian Yanis. That's why he's getting this fight. So he's going to fight Piotr Jan. Yeah. Sitting out is probably not the best thing to do from Rob right now. Get one more in there and and go. What did you make of the announcers already laying the groundwork for the winner of Cheeto Sandhagen having to face Rob next? I don't think that's the case. Maybe if Corey wins, I think that's probably what happens. But if Cheeto wins, he's not fighting Marab, I don't think. I think the announcers were just talking because I don't. <laughs> There's a 0% chance they're making Marlon Vera fight Marab next. That's just a 0% chance happening. Uh, and I think it's probably unlikely that Sandhagen has to do it if he wins either. Maybe. Maybe they still do it because they just... Sandhagen's already had an interim title fight and they've just got to burn through contenders to some extent, but I think they were just saying stuff. Is Umar the only person in the division who would give Marab a tough fight? No. Um, I think he would give him a tough fight. I can't say that with certainty. I mean, we haven't seen enough, even though I, I have imminent faith in Umar. Corey Sandhagen would be interesting. Um, Corey Sandhagen look at, at the thing I learned from this fight more than any of if I learned anything from this fight other than unbelievable cardio that Marab has and that he can do it for 25 minutes, uh, you can't you can't play the game with him. You can't be trying to edge him out. 
uh, you've got to hit him with real offense. That like at a at a baseline level, that's where Jan screwed up tonight or where where he failed. He had nothing to make Marab think twice or prevent Marab from doing his game. And that sort of game, you're not going to be able to dissuade by simply stuffing the takedown and pivoting out because Marab's cardio is too good. He's just going to shoot 50 freaking times. You got to hit him with something. You got to hit him with something that hurts and makes him think, I don't want to be firing in here recklessly. Marab has proven to be durable. He has been hurt before, but he's proven to you know be durable. But Corey Sandhagen has a heavier level of artillery to, to bring to bear than Piotr Jan does. Uh, he's not as good a grappler, but he can hit him a lot harder. And I think that's a much more important than, than just outright ability to stand up and, and grapple as we saw tonight. So mixed reviews on your thoughts on Marab, uh, but this is the one I keep seeing. So how is Habib one of Jet's favorite fighters? He spams takedowns as well. If he can't get them, he keeps going in, but he hates Marab. I don't think you hate Marab. You're just not a fan of the style. I have, so I, have any, I, I think Marab's actually a pretty cool dude by all accounts. Seems good. Loved his post fight yeah. speech. That's uh, really good. If you can't tell the difference between the way Habib fights and the way Marab fights, I would encourage you to watch more fights because there's a very clear difference. And as I explained in my thing, I, you have some grace period. I wasn't opposed to Marab spamming takedowns early in the fight. It's when you continue doing it and it doesn't lead to substantive offense. Outside of Gleason Tebow, which was not a fight that anyone was raving about Habib from afterwards, in what fights did Habib spam takedowns fruitlessly to yield no results. The first round of Connor is the only argument you can realistically make there. Oh, he just held him. Yeah. He held him to purpose. Connor was tired. And then what happened in the second round? He beat the bejesus out of Connor and had Connor going, dude, I was just saying stuff. Calm down. <laughs> if Marab came out in round three and had Piotr Jan being like, Hey, I'm going to call up Putin. I'm so sorry Russia invaded Ukraine. Chill the F out. I wouldn't have a bad thing to say about that performance. I'd be like, oh, he just beat, he literally beat Pyotr Jan into submission. That's sick and awesome. It's not what happened. It's just not how it goes. <laughs> Ferrer versus O'Malley 2 is inevitable, but who does Marab take in the end? We kind of figured that out. Seems like Sanhagen, maybe Umar, but I just... If, if, Sanhagen Marab Umar might just end up... Only one yeah. Uh, that's probably it. Because it. It, it will never be O'Malley. Uh, Rob Font is fighting Adrian Yanez. And may, if Rob Font wins that, you could maybe do that. If Adrian Yanez wins, why would you possibly want to sacrifice a dope new prospect to Marab doing Marab things like that would be an awful matchmaking. So yeah, it's, it's one of those two. It's one of those two. So do we just ice O'Malley? No, Sean O'Malley's next fight will be for the belt. Yeah. We ice him until the belt. If that's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. He, whoever was either. If, I, I'll he's just say either. Like, fight, <laughs> yeah. He's fighting either Alger fighting Cejudo. Marlon Vera for the, for the belt, for the vacant belt, Henry Cejudo for the actual belt, or I guess there is some, if Vera loses and Sterling wins and vacates, then he's fighting Marab for the vacant belt. It's one of those three. Yeah. But I, I just don't know if Aljo jumps to 45 before getting that O'Malley fight. It's the biggest fight he can get at 135. Does, do you make the cut he, one more time for, for, for the bag? I don't know. I, I'm leaning towards the jump up. It's le honestly, it's to me, I think the calculus is less about fighting Sean O'Malley. Um, though I'm sure that that is a incentive to stay, certainly, but they have a real friendship. Even the way Rob spoke afterwards, you know, he's a true champion. I'm here until he leaves. They know that this is coming. You, you play, a, you, you're running a risk the longer you wait, and Sterling wants, Sterling wants to move up. I think the bigger factor is what moving up looks like for him because obviously Alexander Volkanovsky theoretically should be fighting Yair Rodriguez. I know he is um, trying his hardest not to, 
because he would rather rematch Islam again. But all signs point to that being the fight that's going to be made. The things that have been said by the UFC, certainly what Volkanovsky's clear intentions are, he wants, if he's going to have to do that, he wants to fight that fight and then he wants to move on. He wants to go back after thing. So if that's the case, convincing him to fight the Bantamweight champion moving up seems like it's going to be really hard. That's not even factoring in if Arnold Allen beats Max Holloway and where we go. It's it's a muddled 145 picture in some ways for Sterling moving up, which I think probably plays more into his decision because he's not going to move up to not fight for the belt, you know? Like, why in God's name would he do that? So I think that's more than the than the O'Malley fight at this point. O'Malley did nothing to earn a title shot. You beat Piotr Jan. It is a win. He beat Piotr Jan. He officially beat Piotr Jan. It's in the record books as a win. And Sean O'Malley is the biggest star in the division. They're going to give him a title shot. That's it. This is the UFC yeah. people. If you're newer to the sport, which some of you might be, and that's cool. This is how the UFC does things. They've been doing it forever. It's about the money. It's about biggest fights possible. Aljamain Sterling or Henry Cejudo versus Sean O'Malley is a million times bigger than either of those guys fighting Marab Buelsh really right now. And he's, yeah. Aljo's obviously not going to fight Marab. Sean O'Malley's the biggest star in the division. He's the biggest star in the division right now. So he's going to get a title shot after beating Piotr Jan, whether you scored it for him or not. That's why he's not fighting anybody right now. He's waiting to get a title shot. They're going to give him a title shot. If you want to talk meritocracy, obviously I would say that Dallas Feely's run is currently better. Yeah, um, I agree. If if you want to say that Sean O'Malley lost, which I, I think he did, you can also say that Piotr Jan maybe shouldn't have beaten Jose Aldo. Um, you can't play in those games. Officially, it's a win. I agree. On paper, Dvalish really has a better case for it, but it's just not the world we live in. And I will also even say Sean O'Malley had Piotr Jan hurt more. He didn't win the fight nearly as convincingly as Marab did. He damaged Piotr Jan a hell of a lot more with 10 less minutes to do it. So, you know, however you're playing this game of ifs and whats, it's it's not the real world that we live in. Who wins, Aljo versus Sean O'Malley? I would strongly anticipate Aljo wins that fight. It seems like a very, very good fight for him. Yeah, which is why I, I found it so utterly stunning that... Aljo just didn't go for the O'Malley bag right away. That's why it's so important when that microphone is in front of you, be ready to go. Have a name set. Aljo, it was right there. Sean O'Malley, you just beat Piotr Jan. Dana said, winner of that fight was getting a title shot. I'm the champ. Let's go. Boom. That's the fight we'd be getting right now. And Aljo would probably be like a minus 350 favorite right now. But now he's going to fight Henry Cejudo. And that's happening. Tough fight. It's a tough fight. That's happening. That is happening. But Rob's going to be there, and he's going to get his shot, and he's probably going to win when he gets his shot, but that's just the way that it is. That's how the UFC does things. This ain't Bellator. This is Bellator. Rob's fighting for the belt next. He's fighting for the title next, but this isn't Bellator. That's why Sean doesn't have a fight booked. This is how it works, people. This is how it works. I will, uh, somebody asked earlier, who would you give a shot against uh, Marab? I would love to watch him fight Patchy Mix. I think Patchy Mix would Patchy Mix would give him some struggles and that fight would be very, very fun. Very, very, very fun. Um, I mean, shit, I'd still watch the Stotts fight. I think he has a pretty good chance against Stotts, but still watch the hell That's out of it. Fun. So, um the the mid the mix Stotts fight will obviously be great, but I think Patchy Mix could low key like be the best band away in the world. <laughs> so it's a good division, man. It is a good division. Second best one in the sport. That would be fun. That would be fun as hell if we could if we could get that fight. Sure, just do uh, it. crossover for this one. No one cares. It's been wait. You think Henry Cejudo is a smaller fight than O'Malley? Most of O'Malley's fan base is illegally streaming every pay per view. Man, you can't be serious in this question. Who who is Henry Cejudo's fan base? I mean this very seriously. Who's Henry Cejudo's fan base? That's a great question. You, you know how I know Henry Cejudo isn't a star? It's a very simple answer. I already referenced it. The day he retired and explicitly said he was retiring because he wasn't getting enough money, 
the UFC's answer was not, we'll talk to him. You know, we'll, we'll see about it. It was bye. We have a new title. It's going to be Piotr Jan versus Jose Aldo. That happened within 10 minutes of him announcing his retirement. Do you know what happened when Habib Nurmagomedov said he was retiring because his father died and he was like, I don't want to do this without him. My father passed away. I fought this one last one because it was my duty and obligation. They spent six months denying that he was done and desperately trying to keep that man in the fold. Dana constantly was like, we're still talking. He wants to, we hope, we hope not. They built it a, a belt. It was all nonsense because that dude was a star. Henry Cejudo was like, I would like slightly more money, please. Or I'm going to leave. See ya, Henry. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Man's not a star people. He just isn't incredible yeah. fighter. All yeah. time. Great. Unbelievably accomplished dude. Nobody cares. about him. Like nobody outside of the bubble of hardcore MMA fans are stoked to watch him fight. That's just how it is. The girl, if I went to, if I went to the grocery store down the street right now and I asked 30 people who Sean O'Malley was, and I asked 30 people who Henry Zahuda was, I don't think a lot of those people would know who either of them were, but I would bet pretty confidently that more would know who Sean O'Malley is over Henry Cejudo. I, I think that's, I think that's a good bet. Yeah. It ain't much. Bet, it ain't much, but it would be more. It would be more. Just casual people that I just run into. Hey, you know who Sean O'Malley is? Yeah, he's the UFC guy. We, more people would say that than – more people would know the answer than Henry Cejudo. 100%. That's just, that's just it. And Henry's a great fighter. I am looking forward. To, I am looking forward to this fight with Aljamain Sterling. I am looking forward to this fight. I just wanted to, I just wanted to see Henry prove that he gives a shit. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see him fight one person and then you go fight whoever you want. You could go fight out. You go fight Volk. You go fight Aljo. You go fight for any belt you want. But just show me you're just you're gonna stick around for a fight or two, and I don't know if he's gonna. I just oh, don't know if he's gonna. Zero percent chance. Zero, he'll he'll, he'll fight Aljo O'Malley. if he wins. He'll fight O'Malley, and then we, he may never fight again because he's he's gonna sit out. And he's gonna say I ain't no, fighting again just... until I fight Volkanovski. And when Volkanovski yep. says I'm not fighting you, he's just not gonna fight. That's my Sean, concern. Mike, uh, quick. Guess the number of Instagram followers Sean O'Malley has. Not that this is like the most scientifically established thing, but just take a ballpark guess at his Instagram followers. 1.4 million. 2.8. Oh, Jesus. 2.8. Uh, Henry Cejudo is actually doing much better than I would have thought. Would you care to take a guess? 775,000. 790 so you were very close on that it was i would have thought he was like 600 so sean o'malley is um i'm not a math guy 37 times more popular <laughs> man is almost 3 million instagram followers if you think that 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 those are the same level of stardom they're just not henry sudo far more accomplished fighter far more accomplished athlete sure. undeniably so it's not the same it's going to be a good fight. Who are you picking right now in that title fight? Which one? Cejudo the... Aljo or? Yeah, Aljo Cejudo. Uh, Cejudo, I haven't watched tape much, but it, I feel like that's a pretty good fight for him. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm I'm probably going to pick Sterling for a lot of the same reasons that I would pick him, Sterling against Marab. Just that he's just, he can match Cejudo athletically in a lot of ways. Plus he's going to be much bigger and stronger. Cejudo's, can strike better than Aljamain Sterling because Sterling just still looks really uncomfortable when he throws punches. But I don't know. So too, he's like, so uncomfortable. I can't get past it. The layoff concerns me too. The game is different. And I know he hasn't been sitting on his ass and he's been training with some high level dudes. There's no doubt about it. I don't know. I don't know if yeah. Sterling. I'm, I'm not that's confident. That's to be too much. Yeah. I'm not confident in the pick. You're also forgetting. Um, Henry Cejudo has a secret weapon that is one of the most effective weapons in MMA. Uh, it's called the headbutt, and he's really good at leading in and ducking his head and just jawing you with it. And then referees never catch, like never catch the headbutt. Uh, so really good strategy. Um, so 
again, I haven't watched tape and I'm not confident in it, but my very simplistic breakdown is Al Jermaine will not have a lot of wrestling success. If he can create scrambles and get to the back, maybe, but he's not going to be able to pull off a lot of that, which means he's going to spend a lot of the time striking and it will be his kicking game versus a much more disciplined and effective striking game of Henry Cejudo with headbutts. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I, th- I think at this point we have it's a good uh, fight. I like the fight. Yeah. By the time we get there, I'm going to be into it more. I I've never said I never wanted to see the fight. I just, I think I have because I don't want to see Henry Cejudo fight again because I know where it goes. Yeah. It's if, if I knew Henry Cejudo was hanging around, but this is a leverage play that I don't want to be a part of. <laughs> like, but it's like the good news is Sean O'Malley, this. but Sean O'Malley being the position that he's in almost guarantees us a second fight at 135. It does. If he wins, it, it does. I mean, this is true. I don't, I would rather just him stay. You know, you know my stance on this. My stance is on has been forever. I just want to see the best fighter in a division fight the best guys in the division over and over and over again until one of them beats them. And then the new guy gets to do it and round and round we go because that's what the sport should be. It's not what happens anymore. It's not what <laughs> most people are interested in anymore. I'm weird like that. That's what I would like to see. And I know with Henry Cejudo, that's not what we're going to see. At best, he will win this fight, fight one other dude, and we won't know if he's the best bandweight in the world. We'll know that he beat these two dudes, and then he's going to hold out to fight Volkanovski. If Volkanovski's still the champion, which who knows, maybe he won't be. Him and Yair is going to be the going to be a fight's banger. Gonna, that fight's going to be sick. I can't wait for that fight. All right. I think at this point we have we are done. We have done a, a pretty good job here in talking about this fight, the ins and the outs, and all the fun things that happen. Music plays us off, Mike. Give me a little tease for tomorrow for on to the next one. Not for Nikita Krilov. What's next for Ryan Span though? I need to know because we were lied to. He didn't we win though. He didn't win. I know. I know. So you can't do it. So tell me now because they told me that he tried now. I'm not sure that he's trying based on that fight. They told me that he was focused and took this seriously and then he grappled with Krilov for reasons known only to him. So what what are we doing with with Ryan Spann at light heavyweight? Khalil Roundtree? I'm for it! Okay. That's why you have the show. Something like that? Yeah. I'd rather something like that. Like that fight's fun. A fight is fun and will be done in under four minutes. (laughs) Take the under, slam it home. All right. Slam the under. AKA and I matchmaking tomorrow. On to the next one. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, in about an hour and 57 minutes on the East Coast, it'll be officially UFC 286 fight week. So get excited. Lots of coverage coming your way. And it's a shorter fight week, isn't it? Because aren't we changing hours? So we get one less hour. That's true. And the other piece of good news the main card for UFC 286 starts at 5 p.m. Eastern time. How about that? And, Unbelievable. And it's, and it's pretty decent. I won't say it's, it's pretty good. It's good. The main card's not bad. Just, main I, think card's, just, I think it just covers the good horizon. But the main card time. just uh the main card just got a little the main card just got a little what a little it, better. What did it get bumped? What did it get bumped? Uh, the Joanne Wood, Luana Carolina fight is now in the early, early prelims and the, uh, Casey O'Neill, Jennifer Maya fight just got bumped to the main card. Okay. I kind of thought they might go with Jack Shore there, but that works. Anyway, that's the this feature, is for that's later the feature time. prelim. That's the yeah. feature this, prelim now. This is all for next week talk. This is not today talk. Yes. Okay. Good night, everybody. <laughs>